Welcome everyone, Simon here from the Wells of Wall Street. Today's video, H-Bar Hedera. Um, we'll keep this short and sweet to hopefully 10 minutes or so. Uh, we've got a few videos to get through. Um, guys, we're going to have a quick topic around uh, the hacking that's been going on the last few days. Uh, where we're at with that, because um, I know there's some people have been asking on various groups of mine. You know, they can't get access and whatnot. Um, so we're going to a bit of a deep dive on that quickly. Uh, before we do that, do smash the subscribe button if you have not done so already. And obviously, press that like button uh, if you enjoy the content. Uh, loads of different topics and discussions always on the channel, so do check out the other videos when you get a chance. Let's go straight into this. Uh, so it's a couple of days old now, this news. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, you know, sometimes things get away from us, don't they? And uh, we, we end up being busy in life and, and not even realise these things. But for me personally, um, it was a bit random, actually. Uh, I think it was it was literally on the night. Um, I was utilising my ledger and had to do an upgrade. And then HBAR was not working as an account on my ledger. And I was like, well, that's typical, isn't it? You have a firmware update or whatever. You up upload it and install it, etc. And then this happens. And I was like, oh, have I messed something up? And then this, that, I know. And literally, uh, within a few minutes, um, I got an email from Hedera themselves. Uh, not not for me specifically. Obviously, they sent out to everyone. Um, and just saying that basically the smart contract aspect of, of uh, HBAR and Hedera uh, has basically been suspended uh, due to uh, an unfortunate hacking or indeed an attack on on their system. So uh, we've seen this a few times recently with a few other projects. I mean, Elias Block was one in particular. Uh, I'm not surprised by this kind of thing every now and then, to be honest. Um, and I think Hadir is probably one of those bigger projects out there. Um, you know, we can always say like we don't expect it to happen to to this kind of thing, but. Uh, for me, it's about how they respond, um, how they communicate, and obviously, like, protect us from anything majorly severe further on happening. And in my opinion, they did this. Um, but for those that don't know, I mean, there's, there's a few articles out here now, literally, as I said, two, three days ago now. Um, the importance to understand with Hedera, of course, is they're very much governed by a multitude of companies, Uh in an extent or certain people within those companies the likes of google for example uh, is obviously one of those uh, you've got people like dell etc there's, there's a multitude of them uh, you can actually find them on their website if you want the whole list but there's a few listed here in particular uh, out of interest um and it's funny actually someone messaged me it's like well hang on i thought they're supposed to decentralize doesn't just mean they're centralized well they are looking to go into uh, permissionless uh, aspirations in the near future when that'll be i don't know but the idea behind this kind of like uh, consortium i wouldn't call it ownership but certainly uh, from an advisory perspective and and governance perspective they're trying to build something that not can only uh, work within all their different companies and organizations of course but trying to develop something that's you know on this really high level scaled um you know level of of ability there has you know it uses essentially uh the direct to cyclic graph uh aspect of blockchain which is in my opinion the evolution of the traditional methods of blockchain this is how we're going to incorporate all the things around iot smart home uh you know from the side of automation autonomous aspects all of these things being related i mean we talk about it all the time on the channel especially through the likes of projects as you know iota as uh, a prime example of that uh but I can understand why they did this building block. So yeah, for those that had the question of like, is it really decentralized, centralized? Well, it's it's kind of like in the middle. Uh, I would say like it's 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 something that you couldn't sort of like nail down as like Bitcoin, for example. You would say is like fully decentralized. Uh, this one is arguably decentralized, but it's uh, coordinated by a centralized governance in some weird ways. Uh, but it doesn't mention in this particular article. Hedera plans to transition to a permissionless network eventually. When that would be, who knows? Uh, but the point being here is that there was uh, an exploit on the smart contract a couple of days ago. And in retaliation to this, essentially, they stopped any kind of ins and outs of Hedera. Uh, most exchanges blocked this quite quickly. And we'll go on to that in a second as well, because it is affecting myself and I'm sure many of you out there as well. Uh, but yeah. That, as I said, for me, the most important thing is uh, how they react, communicate this. And I think they did that pretty quickly and pretty well. 
Uh, but yeah, it was, it was actually a shock for me to jump on the ledge. I thought, oh great, is my Hedera token just disappeared because I've done something wrong with the the install or something. But obviously that email came through and I'm just waiting patiently now because I've got um, you know, HBAR on Qcoin in particular at the moment, which I was trying to transfer across. Um, and yeah, it's still not letting me do that. It's, it's still blocked. In fact, uh, I tried literally 10 minutes before this video and the message on there currently is that withdrawals, i.e. me moving it from the exchange to the ledger, withdrawals are suspended, withdrawals currently unavailable as wallets are under maintenance. Well, that's just like a generic terminology, but it's, it's obviously around the fact that uh, they haven't quite switched it on yet. Um, and that's probably uh, a bit of a security element from the exchanges to make triple check that things are definitely okay. Sometimes it, it can take a few days or a week or something, who knows. Uh, but I think there's a couple of other exchanges that have opened this up again. So those out there that are panicking or thinking like they haven't seen this news yet or wondering what's going on, uh, I guess at the moment it's just to keep an eye on all the information that comes out. I mean, the last thing, to be honest, uh, from Hedera specifically and across their whole kind of like social media is that the main net is actually um uh resolved uh albeit that it says some of the proxies disabled so you see here for example the hedera main net has been upgraded to patch the vulnerability and main net is running and available so that was posted on march the 11th i.e yesterday but since then we're still having a few issues with some of the exchanges being able to provide that opportunity to either buy or sell or indeed withdraw until that that's kind of fully fixed we just got to be a bit more patient and it is frustrating because you're kind of like hang on a minute i purchased these they're mine how dare you and then some people get like really angry about it but this is the kind of space we're in this is the the early stages of development and and aspects of this so as i said i'm not massively surprised um to to see further kind of attacks I, I was a little surprised in the sense that it's happened to like a you know the project level of, of Hedera but anything can happen at any point in time so as I said it's it's just one of those things that's happened um, it is usually why I always try to have um, all my tokens off exchanges and stuff like that but in this instance it's kind of not helped either way because even the ledger wasn't working properly at all um, so you know once you switch those um, proxies and the smart contracts off at the project's end there's not much you can do about it so yeah there's a bit of a question mark guys around the whole centralized decentralized well hang on a minute i thought it was but it doesn't feel like it is and you know it's gonna annoy a few people but let us know in the comments below how you've been affected in any way uh hopefully you weren't affected by the hacking itself um i think in that instance majority hopefully majority of people are okay um, but yeah, let's know what you think about all this because I'm a Hedera long-term holder, um, massive advocate of of their their project and their technology, of course. Um, but yeah, I can understand some people uh, get annoyed when this sort of thing happens for sure. Uh, let us know your thoughts and opinions on that. But that aside, let's jump into the chart of Hedera. Now we actually covered this briefly um, on the live uh, show that we did um, Thursday, I think it was. Um, or Friday, one of those days. Um, and it's quite interesting because the most of the market at the moment has come down quite quite a bit uh, over the last month or so. Um, and we've seen that kind of like trajectory forwards from the beginning of January where pretty much it's a replicated pattern across the board with multitude of different assets and projects out there. Um, but because of this large gap that's created... Um, there's always a massive opportunity for this to come down and test the lower regions for support and resistance, right? Now, what I'm finding quite intriguing, and this kind of wraps around that conversation of all the different kind of macro events around the world, you know, what's gone on, especially the last week or so, with relation to all those US banks uh, falling apart. Um, there are elements and correlations of some of these being affected because, you know, some of them are related in terms of crypto banking. But also just in general, the finance industry, um, people tend to put the two and two together and get concerned and, and arguably pull their money out even further. But that aside, generally the market has been coming down and I wasn't surprised by that at all. Um, the only little surprise I had was that the way that we sped through this particular area so quickly. I was expecting a few days perhaps of some sideways movement here to 
to test this region properly, but literally it broke through. Um, so we're just talking really about this kind of roughly 6.8 cent mark, okay, which coordinates around this big kind of like nice sideways movement that we saw between the middle of January and arguably roughly around the middle of February respectively as well. Uh, but that has indeed uh, broken through that support and we've kind of literally on a downward slope all the way down to these particular areas here. So just literally touching on these fib levels of around five and a half cents. So for me, this is a really good TCA opportunity coming in. Hence why I've gotten onto KuCoin and now I can't get the things into my ledger. But that's just the way it goes, right? But the important thing for me right now, um, having gone past this particular area, um, it looks like it's slightly higher than this area, which it is to an extent if you look at it overall. But my points being, and, and roughly around where we drew this orange line quite some time ago, um, these drop down candle wicks here to sort of around six cents are literally in line pretty much with the top areas that we saw back here in September, October last year in 2022. Um, but now we are seeing this area of the FIB level back at around five and a half cents. But these top wicks over the last two, three days are around about middle to the bottom wick edges of the third uh, October and se September last year as well. So overall we're in this very interesting critical point in my opinion where i'm expecting like i was hopefully uh, trying to see here as well but i'm expecting some sideways movement over the next few days there could be some action all the way back up to here to test this region eventually how long that takes we don't know could be days could be a couple of weeks who knows um and swing back up there to test and maybe drop down again but at this moment in time we're seeing a bit of stability over the last three or four days and we could see that. But if that breaks, guys, the volumes aren't coming in, the confidence isn't coming in, then we could see the retaliation of that even more so to then potentially come back down to these lower areas. So the live show we covered the other day, that would take us to around five cents. So this is why I've got, first of all, I have my limit orders here. And I don't even know if they've gone through or not. I need to double check that. I don't think they have because of the smart contract. But the point being is that I managed to DCA about four, three, four days ago. Um, and, and rightly so in my mind, for me personally, to get those areas of just under six cents. But I do have these buy orders round here at five and slightly lower regions of four as well. Uh, this is kind of like a very top heavy kind of aspiration. Uh, but I do think that these these particular two areas, one of which we're in now and the one down here are, are definitely achievable. Um, because if we pull this chart back completely all the way back here to 2020, sounds crazy, but we do need to understand this data point as well. This is where we are right now, just floating around, around five and a half cents. It's literally in line with the top uh, edges here, the top of the candle wick, sorry, of both February 2020, back here in September 2020, and back in the January of 2021 as well. From that point, we went up flying. And that's not what I'm suggesting that we're going to do in the immediate future. But what I'm stating right now is that we've had that upward trend. We had the bull cycle. We're now coming down. But if you think about it realistically, with these three points in particular, and certainly arguably more recently between that sort of August, September period, there's not really much data to suggest that we are definitively at a support line. And that was proven the last few days because we went past that. And now we're floating back down here, which is very much just in the sort of middle grounds of these areas. So when we put it back into the shorter term here that we've got on the screen right now, we can start to identify what well, actually there's no full extensive answers here to suggest that we've got any support structure, even in this current area. That's why I've got these buy orders back down at these lower regions of the five cents and the four and a half cents as well. Because if we look again back in the data before this massive black gap here, this is where we were last testing it back in 2020. And obviously, of course, in 2020, we had a bit of a crash further because of everything that was going on. Um, but this year, they're talking about all the interest rate hikes. The banks have obviously been collapsing last week or two. It's just signaling in my head that these, these things are you know, maybe around the corner. And I've, I'm still in the camp of thinking that Bitcoin will, will potentially come back down to that twelve to $10,000 mark eventually. I'm not saying it will happen in the next few weeks, but certainly, in again, in the Bitcoin chart particularly, 
uh, based on historic information, these data points, it, there is no support lines here properly. And it's exactly the same for Dira and many of the other projects out there as well. So I just want to give you an explanation as to why I'm expecting and have got limit orders at these lower regions. Um, obviously, we all want to make money. And, you know, as I've been de-saying on the way down and up as well, of course, if this thing goes flying up, happy days, not a problem. But I do want to accumulate more Hedera at lower levels, accumulate as much as I can at the lowest price as possible. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm selfishly hoping this comes in. And I do think we could get to this area eventually, as I've mentioned a few times now, that I don't think there's enough support in data historically for Hedera to suggest that even that the price point we're at now is enough. Um, so that's my thoughts. I don't know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below on that as well. Uh, but DCA, which again, I need to check whether I can actually buy this or not still in the exchange, because for me, especially on that 14 day at 27, I'm, I'm referring to these three RSIs here, the 14, I don't know why it's in the wrong order, 14, 28 and 90 based on the days. Um, so yeah, currently 29 on the 14 day and 41 on the 28 day. These are really good areas for me at lowest points uh, before we might see a bit of stability over the next few days. Uh, that 90 days coming down slowly but surely. But yeah, for sure, I think when we get to that kind of like five cent, four and a half cent area, that could be where the 90 day comes down to near that 40 mark, which is just really a superior buying opportunity in my opinion. Um, and what I will definitely be doing. But these next few days could be really interesting as well. As I said, with the interest hike information, we've had the employability aspects in the US last Friday, and that does have a significant effect as well in terms of confidence and everything and the infrastructure of, are we still in a recession? Are we at the beginning of one? Are we going into a bigger one? Who knows, guys? That's why I try to um, obtain and accumulate where and when I can at these various different points because you never know what's around the corner no one can predict 100 percent for sure all i do personally and what has been working for many years is looking at that structured information and data points from the past because then you can understand how traders uh, philosophies work in these areas you can even look at the order books you can see it clear as day um but they're, they're my points they're my points of thoughts of of where i think we could be going to but as I said, this current area, I, I'm, I'm always trying to accumulate when I can. Uh, let me know what you're doing in the comments below. But guys, that very much wraps up today's video of Adira. Um, I'm sure the, the, these last couple of days haven't really helped with the fact of the smart contract situation as well, of course. Uh, but yeah, performance-wise on the right-hand side here, just to clarify these bits before we go. 10% uh, down on the week, 90% down on the month. This is again reflective across most assets. If we pull back like a few weeks ago, most of the assets, including Dira, were in really good, strong green positions. And everyone was like hunky dory, thinking, oh, it's all over now. Uh, but I was very calm and I knew that we'd potentially be coming down um, at these kind of areas again. So it's interesting to see it happen. Um, but that three months is just clinging on to some green there, but that six months overall is still not great and i still think we've got a, a quite a bit of way to go guys to be honest before we can even you know entertain the word bull cycle um let's see how that goes guys but hopefully um in the next Adira video we'll have some further information as to what really happened uh, with that smart contract situation and obviously as well more information as to what prices we will see from Hedera over the next two weeks i'm jumping off this one now guys we've got a few more videos to do this evening thanks for watching we will see you in the next one take care and bye bye